Hey, this is Josh Fox coming to you from the Delaware River Basin in Pennsylvania. Um, the, in many ways, the birthplace of the anti fracking movement um, in the woods where I grew up, and it's Earth Day. <laughs> um, every day is Earth Day, but today is Earth Day. Um, and uh, I was originally, whoa, snake, a little gar snake. Uh, there he is. Go, go, go. Sometimes we're going to get a little nature interruptions during this lecture. So originally I, I had taped this lecture in Germany on my new camera, which then uh, I needed to update my operating system to play the video. But then when I updated the operating system to play the video, it made my editing system uh, not work. So I have to record the whole thing on my iPhone in one take right here in the woods on Earth Day. And that's fine because it's better. Right behind me we see... The Calkins Creek, it's one of the tributaries to the Delaware River. Um, this entire watershed system, which is probably 100 miles, um, is feeding water to 16 million people downstream. New York, New Jersey, Southern, uh, New York, uh, Southern New Jersey, and Philadelphia get their water from this area. This is the area that the banned fracking movement fought so hard to protect, or one of the areas, um, and we won. We banned fracking here in the Delaware River Basin. Uh, it, 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 it's an enormous triumph. Um, it took years and years and years of organizing and citizens getting together. Uh, the title of this lecture is Why Fracking is More Important Than Ever. Which is hard, because I've been fighting fracking for 10 years, so it's hard to say that it's more important than ever. I mean, the fracking movement has won a lot of amazing, amazing battles. Um, in the Delaware River Basin, in New York State, we banned fracking. In Maryland, we banned fracking. We've won battles in Colorado and in New Mexico and um, across the world. We banned fracking in France and in, uh, in the Netherlands and um, in uh, uh, Ireland and Scotland um, and, you know, many, many countries. So we've had a lot of great victories, but right now fracking is still the, it's not just a threat to our backyards and to places that are beautiful and amazing like this. Look at those red pines. God, I love those. Um, but it's so important in, uh, in terms of our climate, um, and I'm going to get to that, but today's Earth Day. So I'm going to do um, an E.E. E. Cummings poem to celebrate. It's one of my favorites, if I can remember it, um, just to start us off in the, on the right note. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees, for a blue, true dream of sky, for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I who have died am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of light and of love and of the gay, great happening, illimitably earth. How can tasting, seeing, touching, breathing, lifted from the know of all nothing, doubt unimaginable you? Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are open. Isn't that great? It's one of my favorite. Always should read more E.E. E. Cummings if we get a chance. So I'm going to take us on a little walk through the woods here, because I think that's the best way I can do this. Um, uh, and who knows what we might encounter along the way. What I'm about to tell you um, is very, very disturbing information. Um, so as many of you know, I, I, I documented uh, fracking all across the nation and during the, the largest natural gas drilling boom in history in 2008, 2009, all the way up until 2015. That was, uh, you know, Gasland and Gasland Part 2 were the films that I created there. Um, and they documented some of the most powerful and disturbing cases of water contamination and air pollution and health crisis due to fracking. Um, I, I traveled all over the country because uh, fracking was proposed for this area, not just this area, but for the whole county and for the entire Delaware River Basin. In fact, they were talking about doing um, 20,000 gas wells in the Delaware River Basin alone. 20,000 gas wells in a 75-mile stretch of the Delaware River uh, would pretty much destroy the whole place. Um, and it was really jeopardizing uh, the water and the air. Uh, when I went around the country, and investigated fracking, I found an environmental catastrophe, a human rights catastrophe, a health catastrophe, and a democratic crisis. Um, 17 million Americans current li currently live within one mile of a fracking well. And most of those fracking wells weren't there when they moved there. <laughs> um, 
they invaded. They came in, and when the fracking industry comes in, it comes in hard with thousands of wells. You have toxic pits everywhere. You have Halliburton trucks swarming the landscape. You have rampant water contamination um, where people can light their water on fire due to methane contamination. You have air pollution, which causes a public health crisis because you have a lot of the uh, volatile organic compounds. Um, that are wafting into people's homes. Fracking is happening in rural areas. Fracking is happening in urban areas. Fracking is happening in suburban areas. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in 32 states. And in each of those places, human rights are overthrown. And people have no recourse to the law. The oil industry is more powerful than anything on the planet. And our government and our regulatory agencies have failed to stand up for the basic rights of Americans. And the process is being exported worldwide as something that should, you know, that, that, that a lot of proponents are saying should become our next energy future. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, and I, 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 I think this is a grave, grave political implications. So... Uh, apart from the localized contamination, which is happening, like I said, to millions of people, and people are fighting that, the frack gas industry, um, and in many ways this happened under the Democrats, under Obama and Hillary Clinton, um, the frack gas industry is trying, is poised to try to become our next big energy provider, our next big electricity generation source. Why is this happening? Well, the Obama administration was fixated on coal. Coal is a terrible, awful fuel. So they wanted to phase coal out to stop global warming because coal contributes an enormous amount of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. We know this. So they created the Clean Power Plan, which made a ceiling for coal, a threshold uh, for CO2 emissions, that coal-fired power plants could not survive. They would simply uh, have to be closed if this was uh, passed, and it was. The problem is that the threshold was not high enough to stop natural gas-fired power plants or frack gas-fired power, power plants. Um, and this is extremely significant because they only counted the, the CO2. They didn't count all the greenhouse gases. And frack gas emits a lot of carbon dioxide, less than coal, so it survives the threshold, but it also generates an enormous leakage of methane into the atmosphere. And methane, as you well know, I'm getting out of this on here for a second, is, is methane is enormously potent as a greenhouse gas. It is uh, between 72 and 105 times more powerful than carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere on the 20 year time scale, which means that, you know, it has the potential to warm the earth incredibly quickly. Um, and it also has the potential to cool things down if we eliminate it, right? Because it dissipates pretty, pretty fast. Uh, we're seeing a global methane spike right now that is 68%, according to NASA attributed to the oil and gas industry. We've also seen temperatures shoot up in the last several years correspondingly. Uh, look at Tony and Graffia's lecture if you want stats on that. So frack gas is very, very dangerous for the climate. And what the Clean Power Plant Plan did was it facilitated the proposal uh, and um, building uh, and growth. Right now there are 300 fracked gas power plants being proposed for the United States. And, and, and 26 liquefied natural gas terminals to export frack gas across the world. 300 frack gas power plants being proposed. Um, that means there's, they're everywhere. There's six of them in the Scranton Valley, just 35 miles from here as the crow flies. There's one proposed for floodplains in New Orleans. There's one in Denton, Texas, uh, that the citizens are trying to fight off. There's another one proposed for uh, the CPV in upper, uh, in, in, uh, in near Orange County in New York, um, just a few, uh, you know, an hour out of New York City. They're, they're everywhere. And what, 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 pass, what passing or uh, pro, uh, uh, approving these power plants would do and in many cases, it's Democrats that are proposing them and approving them. Um, it would necessitate two million new fracking wells, right, which would be a disaster for our, our people and for our human rights, and hundreds of thousands of miles of pipelines, also a disaster. But what it does is it rockets us way past any of our stated climate goals in Paris or anything else. Um, we're looking at, you know, right now, a global increase in temperature of 1 to 1.5 degrees that we've already done. 1 degree Celsius or 1.5 degrees Celsius, depending on who you're talking to and who measures it, um, you know, that's been an enormous physical change to the basics of the planet. That has changed the way water moves on every 
surface of the planet. So water is going up and evaporating. The Earth has become 5% wetter in our atmosphere. And all that water's got to come down, and it does, in downpours and deluge and flood. Um, some of the worst extreme weather events that we've seen uh, in history, two Category 5 storms back-to-back -back hitting the Caribbean in two weeks. Um, Hurricane Harvey, which jumped more rain on, on Houston than, than has ever been seen in that short of a period of time. I, I don't need to go through that. Uh, you guys know about those extreme weather events. But um, oops, I'm getting away from these flies. Hold on a second. Let's move over here. Um, and what, what am I, uh, where, where was I? So we're already at one to 1.5 degrees. At two degrees, um, and we've committed in Paris to try to keep climate change well below two degrees. But at two degrees of warming, we bring about basically a Mad Max scenario um, that's really dangerous and difficult. At two degrees warming, we're talking about melting enough, a catastrophic process of global sea level rise due to melting um, the glaciers in Antarctica and Greenland um, that would bring about five to nine meters of sea level rise. Five to nine meters of sea level rise would swamp our coastal cities in the United States, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Miami, New Orleans. Uh, you know, we would be in deep trouble in terms of increased um, extreme weather, drought, flood. <clears throat> We warm our oceans to such a degree that we lose a lot of the coral reefs and we destabilize so many ecosystems that we actually lose 50% of the species on the planet. That's a lot of goodbyes. Um, and because of the massive destabilization, droughts, fires, famines, floods, political destabilization, the United Nations estimates that at two degrees, uh, we bring about an unstoppable process of, uh, 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 sorry, <laughs> the United Nations estimates that at two degrees, um, we generate so much instability that there are two, uh, that are, there are 780 million new climate refugees. 780 million is nearly a billion displaced people on the planet. People swarming all over trying to find purchase, trying to find a home, trying to find a place to survive. That's what civilization-wide collapse looks like. If we want to stop ourselves from getting at two degrees, we got to be very careful about global methane. Um, we absolutely cannot build those frac gas power plants. We absolutely cannot frack two million new wells. Uh, we cannot put ourselves dependent on frac gas. Um, this is being posited by many Democrats as a solution to climate change. It is a nightmare scenario for climate change. Every scientific uh, study says so. Um, we simply have to ban fracking and we have to stop frac gas power plants and replace them with renewable energy, which we know can provide 100% of all the energy that we need on the planet. There's an answer to this problem. It's essentially a political problem. Bernie Sanders was the only candidate uh, and the only campaign, I was a part of it, full disclosure, I was a surrogate, I was an advisor to the campaign on fracking, um, and I was on the Democratic Platform Committee writing a resolution for the Democrats that said we should not incentivize frac gas power plants, and it passed, so it's part of our platform as Democrats. Um, but Hillary Clinton was pro-fracking, Barack Obama was pro-fracking, pro -fracking. a lot of mainstream establishment Democrats are pro-fracking, and they want to see this process of these power plants go online, um, and those gas terminals developed. It simply nothing bigger than fighting this right now. Fracking is more important than ever. Um, and it's a political problem. We need our politicians and especially our Democrats to understand that fracking at the local level is environmental rack and ruin and human rights degradation like you've never seen. Fracking at a regional level causes air pollution and water contamination and um, destabilization. Fracking at a political level contaminates our democracy with huge amounts of cash, campaign cash, going into politicians um, and uh, destabilizing the basics of our democracy. And fracking at a climate level is a doomsday scenario. Doomsday. So, if you have a Democrat who is pro-fracking, that person is essentially a climate change denier because they're not listening to the science on methane. Um, 
methane is leaking out of all of the, the uh, natural gas uh, equipment. The power, um, it's hard for me to remember if I actually said all this, but I'm going to underscore it again. When we frack for natural gas, we have a lot of CO2, but methane leaks out of the, all the infrastructure. It leaks out of the fracking wells, it leaks out of the pipelines, it leaks out of the compressor stations, it leaks out of the pipelines. Purposeful venting of methane straight up into the atmosphere. What we have measured is that between 3.8 uh, and 17% of the total methane being fracked for is going into the atmosphere as methane, not burned and made into CO2. What this means is frack gas is the worst fuel that we can develop for climate change. It is the worst fuel that we can develop if we want to stop um, the rise in global temperatures. It's also the fastest way to get our temperature to cool back down right now because methane disperses very quickly in the atmosphere. We have this global methane spike, 68% of which is estimated by NASA to be caused by the oil and gas industry. So if we cut that off and we ban fracking right now, we get that methane back out of the atmosphere and it dissipates and it cools us down. That's the quickest way for us to buy more time. So the bridge fuel argument, which it says that natural gas is a bridge to renewables, is actually the opposite. It accelerates global climate change. It makes things worse. And it, and it's our principal competitor with renewable energy. We've got to go to renewable energy right now. We've got to get establishment Democrats, Republicans, and our progressive, uh, belev beloved progressive uh, Bernie-crats um, all in line saying, if we want to save this world from global climate change, we've got to stop fracking now. I want you to see this little bud here. I mean, it's just spring, it's Earth Day. It's a beautiful day. The best way we can, the, f the most uh, expedient way to slow down warming and the only way to ensure that we stay within our targets is to ban fracking now all across the planet. We've got to work really hard for that. I'm going to spend the next four minutes of this video turning the camera around to nature uh, because it's cool, but also to show you what's at stake. You gotta run fast if you wanna stop fracking. Happy Earth Day.